Hi, everybody. Hey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Fabulous. You can't. Oh, there we go. I couldn't get my screen to you. <clears throat> okay, so it's already started recording because that's what it does. So hopefully the recording actually works. <laughs> as, as long as it works, I'm going to, then I have to transfer it, put it on YouTube, and then I can share it. Um, so we have a couple minutes before we start. So hopefully some more people hop on. I know, um, I know a lot of people were asking if we could record it. So like I said, I'm going to do my best and we'll go from there. I can't always make guarantees. I don't have very good success at it. I don't know why. Well, it's just tricky because then I can't take it. I don't, maybe, maybe somebody knows how to do this. I can't take it just from the recording and put it on Facebook. I have to go from there upload it to YouTube and then share it. So it's a little bit of a process. And I don't know if that's user error or if that's just the way it goes. So <laughs> I don't know. Darn oh. technology. Yeah, I know, I know. Thanks for doing this one. I feel like I've gotten tons of waiting room questions lately. And I like, I understand it, I get it, but I struggle to explain it clearly. Do you know what I mean? Like to make, I'll it, try to make it, I'll try to make it as simple as possible, but it still can really be it should be the easiest thing ever, but it can still get very complicated. Right, right. But we'll try to, if there's something I don't cover, by all means, ask a question so that we can make sure that everybody has the right answer on it. Okay. All right. Try to get myself like in the center. Oh, yeah. Speaker view, gallery I'm just clicking all kinds of buttons trying to figure this out. Video, invite. All right, so we'll start in just a couple of minutes. Those of you that are on here already, thank you. <laughs> hmm. We have a couple of people that are struggling. I'm getting messages, but they'll be on soon. <laughs> I just got finished working out, so I'm trying to eat my body. Get a little food in you. Mm -hmm. Which I'm sure looks beautiful on camera. Oh, I think you look fine. I, uh, I'm getting my hair done today, so I didn't do anything to it because why bother when someone else is going to do it? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Then it is uh, 11 o'clock here. It's 10 o'clock where Susan is. So, um. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Tammy Battaglia, and I've been hosting a boot camp in my team page, calling it the hottest summer. And the first week or so that we kicked it off back in July, I did some really just back to the basics kind of videos with our leaders, you know, refer to um, VIP 800, that kind of thing. And I, I noticed like a, over the last week, I've been getting a lot of questions from the team about waiting room. And I was just explaining to Susan that I totally understand it. I use it. I can help people do it but I struggle to explain it to make it clear, I think sometimes. Um, so I threw out a message and said, hey, who, who can do this? And she volunteered, so we've got her today and we're going to use her um, and let her tell us all about it. So um, with that, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn it over to you. As, as Susan is talking, you guys are all muted out. If you have a question, there is a chat button in Zoom. If you can find it, you can send the message and I can get it to her. Um, or if we have time at the end, I will um, unmute people if you raise your hand and let me know. I just don't like to unmute everybody because it gets really chaotic. So um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to Susan and you can take it away. Okay. We're going to try to do the basics of the basics. And I'm going to kind of give you a scenario first of how the waiting room was used for me um, from my upline um, back when I first started. So when I first started, I was $300 away in about three days from hitting that 4k mark where you get the iPad bonus and and I literally I may have been closer than three days I don't know but it was three hundred dollars away okay well Maria had had a promoter that clicked the promoter button and ordered I don't know three hundred some odd dollars worth of product um, and so she was a person sitting in Maria's waiting room so Maria moved in the waiting room that three hundred dollars in volume over to me okay she basically just clicked it placed it under Susan and all of a sudden BAM I was a 4k now that waiting room volume promoted my um 
rank. I earned the iPad bonus. Um, that team now that started out at 300 at least pulls 60 to $70,000 in volume every month. So a little $300 thing that happened on that day is now a, a good chunk of my team. So that is what the waiting room is for. It's to help somebody bump up to the next level, help, you know, but um, help them rank up, help them have more volume. Here's the deal though. I don't really know that I ever make any, I personally never make any money off of that team. I, I, probably a little bit, but not a whole lot. Not enough to really be a significant income producing thing. So when you hear people say, oh yeah, I'm a 200K, but I don't make any money and all the volume they have to get to 200K was all waiting room to them, that's why they're not making any money. They didn't bring those people in. Now, um, so it's super, super important that every time you add a promoter, Every time you add somebody direct to your team that you're watching your waiting room because they're going to sit out there for 60 days. Here's the deal though. Let's say you have promoter A come in with a $400 package. So they're in your waiting room with $400. Okay. It's not really time to move it yet. We're just going to sit there and watch it. But that promoter goes and hits VIP 1600. Okay. So now they have $2,000 in volume and it's sitting in the waiting room. It's great to leave it direct to you, but if that $2,000 in volume is going to bump one of your people to 12K or 40K or whatever, you definitely want to move it, okay? You want to move it to them. Now, here's a couple of rules. Big deal, big, big deal. Here is where I made a huge, huge mistake in the beginning. I did not understand the waiting room. I understood that somebody had waiting rooms, some volume to me, but I didn't understand how to move it to people. And I will tell you, and, and this may, I don't want this to sound pretentious, but this is probably why I am not on the millionaire stage because I didn't know how to stack people per se, waiting room people the right way to help other people's businesses grow, that would have been a significant, huge thing in my business. I wish I would have understood that, and I didn't. So I'm telling you now, right now, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of draw this out because I'm a I'm a visual person. Here is you at the top. You see, this is you. Hold on, you. <laughs> this is you. You always need to have at least four to six direct legs. Okay. You always want to have four to six direct legs. I just think that's a given. Can I tell you right now that I have 37? That is stupid. What, what, what good does that do me to have 37 different legs? It doesn't. So I wish I would have known in the beginning to start when I got my seventh, when I got my seventh leg to move it underneath this one. When I got my eighth leg to move it underneath this one, I'm trying to do this. When I got my ninth leg to move it underneath this one or move it wherever, that I wish I would have always just had four to six. Right now, guys, if I had four to six legs based on those 37, there's probably more than I have six pages of promoters. Um, there's no telling how many 200Ks I would have. There's no telling how many more car bonus owners I would have direct to me if I would have stacked them the right way. So first and foremost, you always want to make sure you're here and you have a team growing here, a team growing here, a team growing here. Oops, this person quit working. Pieces of crap, just kidding. <laughs> and then this one's working. Oh, this one quit too. All right, then we need to start building another leg, whatever. Four to six strong legs at any given time. If you right now only have two promoters, we don't need to worry about the waiting room. Just forget it. We need to have at least four to six going, okay? So kind of keep that in mind. Now, something else I want to tell you, whether you move them under another direct person to you or wherever you decide to move them, we'll talk about levels. They're still your personal promoters. They're still your people. So when that whole double, triple commission thing comes out, don't feel like, all those people that you waiting room somewhere else don't qualify. They do. They are still your personal promoters and you're still hoping to grow their business 
you're just, while you're growing their business, you're probably helping them grow somebody else's, which is cool. So first and foremost, keep that in mind. The last thing you want to do is waiting room, all your volume to one leg, and then they do that so-called red leg to you. Whole nother discussion. We don't want that to happen. So here are my rules in the beginning, in the beginning, which was my dumb mistake. So please keep this in mind. I had my four to six legs, but let's say I had all these thing, people in the waiting room and I, I should have moved them somewhere, but none of my four to six legs were anywhere near hitting a bonus and maybe, or hitting a different rank. And maybe they didn't work very hard this month. So I just kept those people direct to me. That was dumb. I should not have done that. Um, I should have moved them somewhere regardless. So I will tell you that every month there is nobody sitting in my waiting room that's going to sit in my waiting room. They are going to be put somewhere. So my mistake in the beginning is if that volume that I could move wasn't going to rank somebody up, I just didn't move it. Remember, Maria gave me that $300 and it ranked me up. That was my mentality. If it doesn't rank anybody up, what is the point? Well, there is a point. <laughs> they need to be moved somewhere. So, because later on, that person could start taking off and now you got people growing all over the place. So, um, but that's what you kind of want to watch. So let's say, I, I honestly don't move waiting room volume till probably three or four days before the end of the month because I want to watch it grow. I want to see who it's going to benefit the most. A1 number one, do not wait till the last day because there is a good chance your time will pass and bam, you lost your chance to move that volume. Okay, your waiting room will shut down. So I personally try to do it two to three days before. So here's what I do. Every day, I'm kind of watching my sponsor's report. I'm watching whose teams are growing. I'm listening to the people who are calling me. I'm watching people move, do their stuff. And let's say I have three promoters who are literally, you know, just a few hundred dollars or thousand dollars away from hitting their next rank. Am I just going to give them that waiting room volume so they can quit working? No. I'm probably going to reach out to them and say, hey, listen, right now I have $1,200 in waiting room volume. I will move to you if you will get within $1,200 of your next rank. So let's say I got somebody sitting at 9,000. That is so close to 12K, right? And I have $1,200 in waiting room volume. I need them to get to, what do I need to get them to? 9.8? Is that what I need them to get to? 9.8? Right. If they'll just add two more promoters and get to $9,800, bam, I'm going to send that $1,200 over to them and they have just hit their 12K rank, right? But what if they don't do it? Is it, should I still move it there? If they try, probably I'm going to. If that waiting room volume will benefit somebody else, I'm probably going to move it there. You really have to kind of be watching your back office. You have to be watching all these legs that you've created and see who it's who can help and benefit the most who can you challenge who can you reach out to and go listen you are so close if you'll just do a little bit more get some more customers promoters i'll move some volume over to you and bam you're there guys sometimes that 4k and 12k is going to change your paycheck so you want people ranking up because it'll change your paycheck and um, not to mention what if you moved it to somebody, not only did they hit the car bonus, but they qualified for a trip and, you know, I mean, what all are the possibilities and you have all the power because you've got it in your waiting room. Here's another scenario. Do you move it to just one of your frontline promoters? In the beginning, we were told move it. So let's say, I'm a, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a visual person, so we're going to try this again. Not, I might make this one a little simpler. Hold on. Hold on. I have to draw it. <laughs> Here's you. Okay. And you have, okay, you have four legs. All of those are doing great. They're fabulous. We're not worried about them, but we're watching this one right here. Okay. We're watching this one. In the beginning, we were told to move the waiting room volume like seven levels down. 
because it would bump that person up, that person up, that person up, that person up. And yeah, it would eventually bump your top person up. But now there's seven levels down. That changes your pay grade too. Rule of thumb, rule. I'm gonna say it right now. Never, ever, ever move waiting room volume more than three levels. That is my personal rule because I, what if, what if you move them three levels? Yes, they're still your personal, but now they're three levels down. What if they have a rock star that's their fifth level? You ain't getting paid very much on that at all. Okay. So, just a rule, no more than three levels. So here's something that I've really learned. Obviously I have my account and I have my husband's account. I have one of my rock star frontline promoters underneath my husband's account. Is that beneficial to me? Absolutely. Because every time she's doing something, I'm getting paid off of it, but she's bumping my husband's account up too, right? So I'm getting paid off of it even more. Um, that if you have a spouse in your house, a lot of times if you have nobody else that really earned your your waiting room volume and it's not going to help anyway, always move it under your spouse. That's where you would want to move it uh, because obviously that income, both incomes come into your household, but no more than three levels. So I will do that. A lot of times I will move waiting room volume to the person that I moved under my husband under them because I just bumped basically two to three people up, right? You just, honestly, the, the biggest thing, kind of always go back to that story. I was $300 away from hitting 4K. Maria moved $300 in volume underneath me. It's still her personal, but it bumped me to 4K. How did that benefit her? A great deal. Plus it benefited me. It kept me rolling and running, right? So always watch your sponsors report you want and, and guys you may be in that situation where you have 37 frontline promoters and four of them work you may be in that situation well that's a whole lot less you got to keep up with but watch them watch and see what they're doing and always know that you can help them by moving your waiting room volume over to them know this too on the last day of the month if they have fifteen thousand dollars in waiting room volume under this one promoter that took off this month and they're doing great and you forget to move them you can still move them the next month but that fifteen thousand dollars in volume only benefited you and that person it didn't benefit anybody else so you could have moved it back in may i had um i had a new promoter and I stacked a couple of people underneath her. I, as soon as she became a promoter, I knew she was going to be a rock star. She took off. And I had a few more promoters came in that were hitting the VIP 1600 and whatever. So I moved them. By the end of that month, that very first person was $30,000 in volume. Now, I could have kept that person direct to me. That would have been great. That'd be a, that's a direct person to me. I could have. And they still are my personal. She's 30, she was a $30,000 team in one month. She's still my personal. But you know what I did? I moved her to another personal I had that bumped that person up to 80K. When that person bumped up to 80K, she literally cried for one. But two, she, it, it changed my paycheck because now I had an 80K on my team who I was getting check matches on because when you're 200K, you get that. But I was like, oh yeah, that was a pretty smart deal. And she didn't make a whole lot of money off of that $30,000 in waiting room volume because she didn't build it, right? But now she's a totally different rank. Her pay grade completely changed because she gets paid more now. So um, that, that was a big example. That one was like a <laughs> miraculous one. And I was like, dang, this person's taking off. But um, it's just kind of something that you have to watch. You want to look for the only way that you create waiting room volume to help your team is by you working. So every month I really try to have, that's always my personal goal is to have four new promoters in there because I know it's going to help somebody somewhere. And even if I move all four of those people to one person, it doesn't matter. It's still volume I've got out there that's going to go somewhere. So my very professional graphics. Tammy, I'm going to turn it back to you to just kind of see what, how I can make something more clear. Okay. Um, 
just in case we have somebody who's like super duper new, like when you look at the waiting room page in your back office, it says that it's a one-time placement. So can you just explain the difference between sponsorship and placement? Because I know you kind of talked about it, but just in case somebody doesn't know what that means. So sponsorship, my sponsorship downline is everybody I have signed up and they have signed up and they have signed up. They have went through my link. I've signed up. My placement downline is the people that were moved to me by my upline. So when I'm in my waiting room and it says I need to move that volume to somewhere. So I move it and I place it under, let's say my cousin Kim, let's just say that. Once I move it, it can never be returned. So you better make sure even when it asks you, are you sure this is who you want to send this to? Double, triple check. Yes. Once it's there, it's now placed volume underneath her. So Kim goes to her back office and she hits her sponsorship downline. She will not see those people. She has to hit her placement downline for her to see all of her sponsorship and her placement downline. Placement downline is the people that have been moved to you by your upline. Um, that's kind of the easiest way I know how to explain it. Sponsorship downline is everybody you have brought in, you personally. Placement downline is volume that it's given to you by somebody else. Does that okay. make sense? Yep. Um, and now this could be an entire other <laughs> video, but can you hit on why the waiting room can be a powerful tool if and when you have a red leg? Or, well, let's start with what a red leg is just in case we have some newbies, and then how you can use the waiting room to uh, get rid of that red leg. Okay, hold on, I gotta do you again. One, two, three. I bet it would be better if I used a darker color, but. Okay, so here's you again, and here's all your legs. <laughs> Let's say these three went to crap. <laughs> That's my favorite phrase. Um, these three quit working. This one's blowing up, okay? But unfortunately, all of your volume is right here, and it's what we call red-legging you. Red-legging you means that you have all your eggs in one basket, only one team is working, only one leg is working, um, or it's doing the majority of your volume. You're still getting paid off of it, but you're not ranking up because you got red leg. So you always wanna have at least two. That's why I tell you, you have four or six, kind of hope they're balancing out one, Quits working. That's okay. You still got five. It's okay. So you always, you, you never want to have too much in one. But you know what? We all have a red leg. Lindsay Dickens is my red leg. Thank God. I mean, thank goodness she takes off. I'm never upset about her being my red leg because that's amazing. But I have to work really hard outside of her very, very strong leg, which I call her my red leg all the time, but she's my favorite red leg. But everybody has one. It, it, it's okay. Don't let it shut you down. You just know you have to work harder on these or bring more in. So here's what can happen. For sure, if you bring in three or four promoters, by all means, do not place that volume on your red leg. Because what's going to happen? They're not, they're not balanced legs anymore. You just made that leg even stronger. Yes, they're still your personals, but you just moved all the volume to the strongest leg. Don't do that. So you want to work other legs, build other legs to kind of balance out this one right here. Again, it's okay to be red legged except on the last day of the month. <laughs> you don't want to be red legged there. But when you're getting waiting room volume or somebody else places to you, they're not going to place it in your red leg. They're going to place it over here. They're going to help you build up somewhere else. You do the same thing. So it's unfortunate for Lindsay that she never, Lindsay never gets any of my volume because she's my red leg. Now, I take that back. She does. And um, most of the time, I'm a, I'm a legit 200K outside of her leg because I have very strong other legs. And remember, 37, whatever. Um, so, but I have very strong other legs that are, that are working just as hard. Um, so sometimes when I see like one of Lindsay's directs, outside of her red leg, which is Brittany Williams. If I see one of Lindsay's directs that's getting really close, I'm no longer in the red, it doesn't bother me. Sometimes I will move that volume over there because it's only gonna help Lindsay in balancing out and, and it's not gonna hurt me at that point. Now, if I was in danger and I still had the big 
total unbalanced, I wouldn't be able to do that. But it can help you. But you just have to watch, you know, on our back office in your little dashboard, it used to say, it used to be a red number. It was big, red, and bold, kind of creepy out. They don't do that anymore. And um, maybe because it just put off a negative feeling. I don't know. But now it says excess strong leg. That means you're red legged. So just kind of watch that. Um, I don't pay attention to it. I think at one point I was about $200,000 thousand in the red leg. I was like, eh. <laughs> so, you know, it just happens, but you, it, it's not red anymore, but you need to pay attention to that because you will not rank up and you will not bounce up to your next level. If you've got too much, too many eggs in one basket. So just kind of keep an eye on that and be careful in moving your waiting room. I, I like that eggs in one basket. I think that's an easy way to understand it. Okay. So one last question uh, before we go. I know you've said like you watch your reports and you you kind of make the decision of who you're going to move it to. Do you ever run incentives and say, hey, I've got X amount in my waiting room. The first person that does X, Y, Z gets it. Okay. Yeah. If I have two or three people that are close um, or if I just kind of want to motivate them and I'll help them. I'm like, I will, because, you know, like sometimes I'll say, hey, I got $1,200 in volume. You add another $800, I'll give you this. But if I have two people in that same situation, you know, I'm like, hey, guys, the first one to get this is going to get my waiting room volume, so take off. Um, and that's an incentive in, them, in itself. You're getting that extra volume to bump you up to the next level. Um, but, you know, I really have to pay attention to that. I, I really think this company really, I mean, I do a lot of incentives, don't get me wrong, because we, we need to do those. But most of the time, the company incentivizes you well, very well. So you don't need to sit around and wait on your upline to incentivize you. You need to do enough to keep yourself in the Uncle Sam good graces so that you're not paying all to the federal government. But you just, um, I, I incentivize them in a way a lot with volume. Um, you know, I, I like for people to be competitive, so it works out really well, but um, it, it, I just play that by ear. Okay. But, it, but I will tell you, if I have a person who hasn't worked and they're just sitting back check collecting, they are never going to get my waiting room volume ever because okay. that irritates the crap out of me. So <laughs> it's a whole other story too. Yeah, right. That's a whole other video. Um, okay. So I can only see three people's faces. Uh, everyone else, they're either really busy or they don't want to be on screen today. So if any of you that I can see have a question and you want me to unmute you, you can wave at me. You can, you can give me a thumbs up. Nobody has any questions. <laughs> no. Okay. Oh, Sandra has raised her hand. Okay, Sandra, let me see. Where did Sandra go? Okay, Sandra, I, you were unmuted. I don't have a question, but I can't, I'm not, I have a white cloud person now. White cloud? Well, I can't, yeah, for some reason I went white. Oh, yeah, we can't see your face. I don't know why. Um, yeah, I made the mistake of moving volume of probably seven levels down, and it totally bit me in the butt. Yeah. yeah. Three, three levels. You know what? We used to really think that was a great idea because it helped so many people, but looking back on it and unfortunately you cannot change it. You cannot move it back. So, um, Oh, okay. And one last question. So if you have a promoter, well, if you, so you know how we split the customers signing up under like you or your spouse and so forth. Um, do you recommend putting all of your new customers under you? And then if they turn promoter, move them to your spouse or splitting up the customers between your husband, you know, between your spouse and yourself? Well, in my situation, I make sure that I have all the ones I need for car bonuses, not car bonuses, uh, trips. Once I qualify for the trip, everybody after that, I put under Mike or under my son or whoever. Um, I do the, so th that's kind of a question. Some people are like, what do you mean you're putting, you can't move customers. But don't we wish yeah. we could have a waiting room for customer? Yeah, really. So here's the deal. I have to always make sure that I have two to four direct customers to me every month because in case one doesn't order, I have to always make sure I get my credit. So that's, how, that's definitely how that goes. I'm going to show you all something. This may confuse the crap out of you, but here's what I do. I have every customer written with their name, like right here. I don't know if you can see this. Here's Jean, and I have two blanks underneath her. Over here, I have Talon. Here's my son, and I have 
two blanks underneath him. Jesse ordered this month. Right now, I know that Talon needs one more customer, ordering customer to get his products free next month. So a lot of times, I already have my four. I'm good. They've ordered. I got it. So I have all my customers written down, and I have two blanks underneath them. If I get a new customer um, that says, hey, I'm ready to do this Thrive thing, I am not going to sign them up direct to me. I'm going to sign them up under one of my customers so that it helps with getting them credits. I encourage my customers to do their own referrals too, but, you know, they may have one. I may have their second one. Bam, they're getting their Thrive for free next month. They're going to Thrive again with me. So I try to help them any way I can. Um, as far as splitting between my husband's, if it's my husband's friend, yes, it goes under his account. Um, if it's based on my Facebook or whatever, it's going to go underneath me. But now, you know, I have all the ones I need for my trip. Most of my people are starting to get their Thrive for free. They haven't all ordered this month, but they're all set up to. So probably every, well, I even qualified for the trip under my husband. So I'm probably not going to put any more underneath him this month because I just try to make him get his car bonus. I'm actually trying to earn the car bonus elite. So I have to have 12 auto ship customers every month. So probably more people are going under mine, but I just watch it. I watch both dashboards. Um, if Mike needs volume, I don't. If Mike needs another customer, I don't. I I'll go back and forth. But I for sure make sure everything is qualified under Susan because I'm the, the main one. Everything's under Susan first, and then we can go after that and work on that account. Okay, Sandra, I'm going to mute you so you have one more question. So, Jean? Jenny, yes. Jenny, <laughs> sorry, Jenny. Jenny has a question. Hi, I just have a quick question. I just recently used it, the waiting room for the very first time, and I moved someone under my husband, but it show, it's still, that person shows up under my sponsor's report. It's not going to show up under his, right? No, it will always be your personal. So it's always going to be on your sponsor report. When you go to his account, hit his placement down line. It'll show all his sponsors and his placed volume. Okay. Yeah, that's Perfect. how you that's how you see it. So okay. Helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> all right, we have five minute warning till free Zoom wants to kick us off. So does anybody have any more questions? Oh, Amanda does. Let me unmute Amanda. Okay, Amanda, you are open. Okay, it's just a quick question. I kind of am confused about why you say only to um, use the waiting room three levels down. What is the reason for that? Because it changes your pay grade. So, okay, if you look back, if you look out on your, uh, oh, the compensation plan is so confusing, and I literally didn't know how to, I didn't understand it for a whole year. I was like, who cares? I'm just gonna <laughs> so, um, but if you look at your compensation plan, you know when you're a 4K rank, you get paid so many levels deep. When yeah. you're a 12K, you get paid more levels deep. When you're a 40, more. When you're 200, it's eight levels deep, right? Yes. See, you know how that works. Mind you, that person you moved is always your personal. That's great. But what if their fifth level person takes off and their fifth level person has a fourth level person, which now makes that nine levels from you but you waiting room them really far down <laughs> those rock stars are now like 17 levels from you you're not getting paid on them oh, okay that makes and sense you're getting yeah. paid on your personal but you're not getting paid on all those rock stars they've got going on okay, okay. so you want to keep everybody at least three so let's say they have a fourth level person that takes off well now that's your seventh level okay so you just you don't want to go too much further because after eight levels, it, it, as a 200K, you don't, you don't, well, you get tech matches, but you don't get paid on what they're doing. So um, it was a hard lesson to learn. Uh, and um, oh, darn it. Yes, it helped a lot of people that month. But, you know, what if, like, what if you moved them seven levels and the six in between just quit working? All those people are, you're like, <laughs> especially if all the people below them are kicking butt so just don't ever move them three more than three levels i am okay. a one and two level that's about as far as i'm gonna go because i get super nervous because i've been burned on it right i moved a total rock star six levels down their team went absolutely crazy i might make four dollars off of them now because they're moved so far down so okay so when you move somebody when you move somebody in the waiting room, um, when you move them under like a different 
leg, do they make commission off of it or do they just get the volume? I think they make a little bit. I would have to honestly go back and look that, you know, big, huge waiting room team that is now sixty, seventy thousand dollars in volume. I'm pretty sure I'm getting something. I'm not getting paid as much as Maria is because it's her team, right? They uh -huh. always help my volume, which is good because they kind of help offset my red leg. Um, but I don't, I don't think I make, but maybe just a little bit off of them. I mean, that's a big volume. I'm not making much. So, well, I don't mean, I don't mean your volume. I mean the volume that you put that person under. Yeah. I don't think like, you make money very much off of placed volume. So okay, like okay. Jenny moved some people under her husband. Jenny's making my money off of it, but I don't think her husband's making. Uh, okay. Yeah. Money. That's what I wanted to know. Okay. I'll, um, I'll try to screenshot the actual part of that. Cause I do think you make a little bit off of placement, but like Susan said, not much. So okay. When you have people who are building teams just from place volume, when you look at their paycheck versus someone who has built their own team, the paychecks are strikingly different because you're getting paid a whole lot more on people that you bring into the business. Okay. So I'll try well, to find that thing. and screenshot it. Let's think about this too. Let's say I, Susan, had Dana moved underneath me. Dana is a placed team. So Dana does a $400 order. If Dana was my personal, I'd make $80 off of that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't, because right. she's not my personal. Yes, she's been moved directly underneath me, but I don't make that commission Maria does. Does that make oh, sense? Okay, okay. Yeah. yes. So uh, I got the volume, that was great, but I didn't get commission off of it like Maria did. Okay, thank you very much. All right. I am going to go ahead and call it because we just have a couple minutes and I know Zoom will like knock me off. So Susan, thank you a million times over. Um, you guys, I'm going to go now and try to upload this to YouTube and then get it ready to share. Um, so if you got some value out of this, which I'm sure you did because she made it very clear, um, make sure you share it with your teams. Make sure you kind of keep track of it. Just, you know, tag it somehow that you can go back to refer to it, especially when we get down to the last 10, seven, five days of the month and you need to really think about your waiting room volume. Um, and the last thing I will say about waiting room is never, ever, 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 never, ever move people by yourself. <laughs> if you are not 100% sure of what you're doing, get your upline on the phone. And if your upline doesn't know, get their upline on the phone because it really can make or break. Well, I don't want to say it's not going to break you, but it really, truly can make a difference in your business. So um, thanks everybody who hopped on and um, hopefully we'll have another Zoom soon. Bye. Bye. Stop.